Cat TV is celebrating 30 years of community media. Help support Cat TV's next 30 years by becoming a member today. Your membership will help us continue covering meaningful, local content. Thank you for supporting your local community media station. Uh, the North Bennington Credit School Prudential Committee sitting as a tax abatement board under uh, uh, 16 VSA Section 514 because we are an incorporated district and there's a there's a particular section that details that we are the board for abatement of education taxes. And um, I don't see public here, so I'll move forward with the, the hearing. And uh, uh, Mary, since you, you are the person who calls this meeting, uh, I'll let you proceed. All right. Well, I don't know that I necessarily need to go into the entire history of the matter. Right. Suffice yeah. it to say, Mrs. Niles, when she received her tax bill in September, uh, notified me that there was an error, that her state adjustment was not there. She and I have worked together um, since that second week of September um, to get her homestead the two homestead filings done, the one that simply says I'm a resident, and the second one is the income adjustment portion. Yes. Um, yeah. Despite her uh, efforts, Mrs. Niles was not able to follow through um, on any of that. Um, and so the upshot is, I believe it was uh, on the 8th of November, she and I met here at the depot to talk about uh, the next steps. She agreed to pay $1,000 towards the tax bill, which had been billed then at a non-resident rate. And um, she then wrote a letter <clears throat> to Lori Elwell clerk requesting this abatement hearing. Um, there were some subsequent attempts to follow up with Mrs. Niles to make sure she had all the information needed. Uh, I never did hear from her, but her son kindly stepped in. Um, and if you wish to hear from his point of view, I will point the camera in that direction. Well, I think we should hear from, from Mr. Niles. Yes. All right. Um, so, just to give a little background on my mom, um, she's always had some, some uh, mental health issues. Um, I didn't really realize how bad they were until, I don't know, I guess really about the last year, she's gone downhill a lot. Um, and so in the last six months or so, I've noticed a few things that have in turn required me to, to kind of step in. Um, and so in the process of getting things straightened out, I, I came upon, you know, this tax bill, I guess. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to get it straightened out, and uh, here I am, essentially. Okay. Um, so uh, I'll depend on Mary to correct me if I'm wrong on this, but my reading of the statute for abatement that controls this hearing is that um, you would be applying under the section that deals with persons who are unable through for uh, financial reasons mostly uh, to pay their taxes uh, for usually for a particular cause and um, so I think from my reading of uh, the material that Mary has provided me, um, what I would like to know is you, you provided a cause for why the filing for uh, residential status 
and for uh, the normal payment that uh, she would have received from the state under that program um, to uh, provide that her taxes are, uh, uh, what is that? Sorry, I'm blanking on <clears throat> what goes on with that program, but uh, because her, the taxes would be higher than her income would uh, uh, allow her to pay the whole amount so that she gets a break from the state. A rebate? A rebate, a prebate as, as, as it's called. So she didn't get a prebate because she didn't file for, um, she didn't, didn't file her residency status and she didn't file her uh, income paper that tells the state that she's eligible for that prebate. Um, and um, as I understand it, Mary worked with her, but she still didn't get it in. Although uh, I remember from Larry, Mary's letter, she, she said that uh, uh, Michelle had said she would get it in and uh, with over several contacts, she said she would get it done and she didn't get it done. And you're, you, you're saying that you think she has some um, issues in terms of uh, executive function, I guess, is what you're saying, yeah, I, I, right? Which you're, you're just noticing now, you didn't know about it before this came up, I, right? I'd say I knew. Uh, but I did not realize uh, it was that that the state it was at. Okay. All right. Um, is there so one further question that I would have, and Mary maybe Mary knows this better than I uh, would. Um, is is she she's uh, a, she was able to pay the thousand dollars, but she but two things interfere here. One is she's at the commercial rate, which uh, for persons who are non-resident property owners. And two is uh, she was depending on the prebate in order to be able to, to pay those taxes. So there's a, in, from the perspective of paying those property taxes, she needs that assistance. She doesn't, she isn't unable to pay it uh, in full without that assistance. That's what you're asserting, right? Yes. Okay. Um, are there questions from other board members about? Yes. I, I would like to know, um, is the state, <clears throat> does the state ever allow uh, after the deadlines to, to refile and get that fixed? Or is it a hard, a hard line with the state? In other words, is there is there any indication that we could still get, with help, get her to get her status appropriately um, established? Uh, no, Matthew. No, Matthew. Not at this point. Not at this I'm point. Sure, I'm sure if it had been one day after the deadline. There could have been something done, but quite honestly, at this point, I don't believe, and Matthew doesn't have any idea either. He can't find any records that anything was done. Right. Right. So uh, no attempt was made to get the filing in, and these circumstances are from Matthew's point of view. They're an indication of uh, the condition that his mother is in at this point mentally and uh, with regard to being able to take care of her affairs properly. Correct? Correct. That, that's the way I get it from you. So, yeah. What, um, would, be, what would be the amount? Um, it, it seems like something worth calculating based on income records and stuff. What is the amount that if had, it had been properly filed, what would be the um, prebate amount against the total tax bill? For the trustees, we have absolutely no idea. 
because we had not no income records whatsoever. There was no 2020 taxes filed. Okay. Okay. So, um, and without filing without filing taxes, I'm, can you even do the prebate? Um, no. 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 You have to, that's have to file provided, over on your return. That's why I provided the prior five year history. Right. So, uh, but previously, is it true that previously, say 2019, this this uh, return was filed and she received a prebate? Correct. Okay. And we know we know what that prebate was as, as a percentage of the taxes. Correct. And and you, there's a history there before that of filing and getting prebates, is there not? Okay. So uh, so there's a dramatic change here. And um, it's also the fact that, although I'm not sure that it makes a huge amount of difference that this is uh, being paid under a commercial rate structure, I, I do not remember for that tax year whether that was uh, a lot more expensive because last year, um, yeah, I, I just don't know. I, without Ray, more, it, Ray, it, it was about a $200 differential. Okay, so it was $200 higher. All right. Um, right. Uh, are and, there? And can we can we apply that notion? The uh, I presume that the taxes that were filed in 2019 um, included um, Pete Pete's information. Right. No. Is, I mean, so is that a number that we could use as a way of understanding what she has not been able to receive from the state? Matthew, there was little difference in the prebate over the last five years. That average is fairly solid that I, that I quoted. And there I didn't was little that. variation around that average. There was little variation, is that what you said? Very little. Very yeah. little. So she could have expected you you would you know she could have expected to pay about a thousand dollars of the bill Is Absolutely. That right? okay i had missed that part so thank you um yep um do you have do we have any other questions that we should ask here i mean because we're really dealing with only one section of the, this law uh and the questions that are appropriate are, uh, why didn't you file for the prebate or if you were eligible? And uh, uh, so the kind of paperwork issues of actually making a filing so you could be eligible for the prebate and for the uh, homeowner's tax rate. <clears throat> and the other is uh, that, that whether the issue of whether there's in in a, in the sense of the property taxes indigency indig, indigency that she can't pay it she doesn't have the income to pay it or the resources to pay it for the amount over and above what she would ordinarily pay after the prebate and um, is there anything else on that that score between Mary and Matthew um, about Michelle was uh, um, situation financially that that's that's uh, she was entitled to a prebate if she filed and we roughly know the amount but we don't know the exact amount she was entitled to have the residential rate if she filed and we do know what that would be because Mary's just quantified it and um I guess the, the, the only other question is um, the veracity of what you assert that she couldn't pay that and I, she was getting a prebate and that's part of <laughs> the story that tells you that she couldn't have paid it. 
because um, it's meant to help people of, whose income doesn't uh, uh, isn't going to be able to cover that. So, are there other questions the board needs to ask? Uh, what is what is the outstanding balance? Yep. Good question. Uh, okay, that is. Outstanding balance is the principal is one thousand two. Move, move back, Mary. Move back. One thousand two hundred thirty-eight dollars nineteen cents of principal. There is a penalty of ninety-nine dollars and six cents. There is interest of forty-nine dollars and fifty-two cents bringing the total outstanding of $1,386.77. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and uh, this address is in within the village of North Bennington? No, it's in District 1. That's what I thought, although it's... Dun it's Dunham confusing. Avenue. It's confusing because it does list as uh our zip code yeah uh, that's that's a postal thing yeah not, right not our boundary i got you <laughs> yep <laughs> you know so, that but as well as i do so so what is the status of the taxes owed to shaftesbury yeah. um, i haven't gotten to that step yet um like i said i, I am just Basically, I just took over her, her finances. Um, I'm having her mail sent to my house now. Um, so I'm, I'm discovering a lot of these things as I go. Um, okay, that'd be great. Um, so with, I honestly can't answer that. Okay. Back, Mary. Municipal tax, so they'll have to settle that outside of the state prefix. I understand. Resident has no bearing. Yeah. I, under I understand that. Um, it doesn't bear on on our questions of no. abatement here. Does, we we would not be able to abate them, and uh, that would have to be the town of Shaftesbury. Right. So my final question is: is that if um, if Matthew is, is doing the, is taking over this stuff, can we be assured that the proper filings will be done in the future Absolutely. Um, on her behalf, on Michelle's behalf, so that that gets done? Yes. Um, and I think that's important. Yeah, also, um, especially because the mail is sent directly to my house. Right. She, okay. She's not seeing it. She has, she has good intentions. She just can't comp comprehend. Uh, she's very easily confused. Of course. So oh, I understand. It, it, it's just better if, if I handle things. Uh, yeah. But, but yes, I, I will make sure that those things are taken care of. Okay. Um. Well, um, unless there are further questions from the board or further information to be offered by Mary Rogers or Matthew Niles, um, uh, I, I think we uh, can put ourselves into uh, an executive session to discuss this. And um, we, I, I don't know if we'll come out with, with a decision. We do have to give you a written decision. Uh, we'll have to come back to deliberate about that. At any rate, we'll, we'll talk about it in an executive session. Um, so um, I don't know how long that will be, but we need to have a, um, I, I do not know how to do this. We need to have a uh, breakout room for the board to be in an executive session and um, 
Um, you're welcome to stay, Matt and um, Mary, uh, and await our return from executive session. It, does Mary does Mary not sit on this board? She's part of this board. Yes, she is part of it, but she's not a voting member. Okay, I just I I didn't know for sure how that worked. Yeah, it's the Prudential Committee that makes the decision. She is, of course, uh, our employee in a sense, and right. uh, and uh, she's responsible. Sorry. Can you move back just a little bit? We can provide him a decision. Matthew and I are you, not need to stay. I, I didn't get that. If Matthew chooses to go home, he may go home, correct? He could right. go home. He will he will be yeah. notified uh, in writing. Right. And uh, the only issue for us for, for open meeting laws is that what decision we have we will come back out of executive and make that right. decision public. So he will be notified um, by in writing and also by a phone call if if requested. Right. Um, so yes, he could go. And if if he goes, then Mary, you could join us in this breakout room at that point. If Matt's if Matt uh, is not going to st stick around, which you know, I, I don't. It, it's up to him whether he wants to stay or not. But we will, we will give you a call, and certainly, uh, can we? Maybe if you could leave your address with Mary, so we can send you the letter directly instead of it getting forwarded. Can't hear you. Are you? Not getting it. Are you at the same distance you've been at? Yep. You have Maybe a, you should move forward now. I don't know. You have a malfunctioning microphone. That's yeah. all. Uh, Mary does have my address as well yep. as my email. Uh, okay, great. So I think I'm, I'm going to go home to my kids. Um, yeah. But I wanted to thank each and every one of you for, for taking the time to, to hear me out on this. I, I appreciate it. You're, you're welcome. Very and welcome. Of course, um, your, your mother's certainly entitled to this hearing, and we appreciate you coming to state your case. Um, uh, I, I think it was helpful to hear from you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Matt. We, we'll, we, we can send you an email about it too through through Mary. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. Yeah, good night. So uh, we need to, I think all of us except Cat TV can be in this executive session if we can arrange. Uh, well, actually, I think we do have to break out because Cat TV is here. <clears throat> if they're going to hang around for a decision Mary, on our, our part. Mary, do you know how to do a breakout? Not a clue. <laughs> me neither. Lori? Hold on. Let me see if I can figure this out. Nope. <laughs> it's not. A Lori, do you know how to do that? Now I can't hear. Oh, she's muted. Oh, I can. Hold on. I'll put them in the waiting room. Okay. Cat TV, you will be in the waiting room. And Cat TV, back to this meeting. We're out of executive session, and uh, we have uh, a resolution to make. Matt? Um, I will make... Uh... Is it a resolution or are we making a motion now and voting? A on motion, it? sorry. I'm going to make a motion uh, that we, uh, given the understanding of the circumstances in this case, <clears throat> um, that, that we abate 
the remaining balance of of taxes uh, owed the village school. I mean, the the, uh, uh, the school. The yeah, school district. The school, school district. district. Thank you. North Bennington graded school. Or you'll fix that all up. Make nice yep. point. <laughs> um, and uh, always do. Yes, you do. And that's the motion. And uh, with that, we'll go the uh, ta interest and tax and uh, by statute penalty. With, by with statute, that, we'll go. We'll go uh, the penalty yep. and uh, late fees. Yep. Okay. Um, are we all agreed on that? Raise your hand and say aye. 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 Um, I don't think we have any other business. So um, I think we will sign off. Thank you very much, Mary. Thank um, you Ray, Lori, for being here. Sure. Yes. I have a question for you, Ray. Yes. Um, next week would be the regular monthly meeting. Will you be yes. holding one? Yes. Mostly just for Bill. And that'll I be what night? Wednesday? Wednesday, next Wednesday. At uh, 6.30, is, that's our usual. Is it? I don't know about Kim, but um, I'm going to be are, okay. What I'm going to be on the road between Burlington and and home, leaving here around five, Burlington, and so I can stop. It, you know, it's one of those things. Give me a call if you don't have a quorum type of thing. I'll pull over and okay. Well, if I'll check with Kim and we'll work that out. Hopefully, we'll have three. Okay. Looks like we're going to get a bit of snow up here. Yeah, so, I've heard we're supposed to get some, but I don't know about that. At any rate, um, so I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much, Cat TV. Thank you very much, Mary, Lori, Kiernan, Matthew. Good night, y'all. Good night. Good night. Cat TV is celebrating 30 years of community media. Help support CAT TV's next 30 years by becoming a member today. Your membership will help us continue covering meaningful, local content. Thank you for supporting your local community media station.